How are you all doing? Thick Mornington here, not taking a look at a club, but we're actually having a look at something which uh, I didn't really know about until very recently. Some of you may remember, if you've been on the grid for as long as I have, some of you may remember the old, sci uh, the old um, Second Life Science Fiction Convention, which then I think turned into the Second Life science fiction expo and that's when acs american cancer society started running it um which basically became a relay for life event now this year there isn't actually the old sci-fi convention on there's 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 it's just not on however something popped up to take its place and we're actually standing in what you could basically call the entrance region for it right now it's the fandom convention uh, and instead of being encompassing for only science fiction the fandom convention basically covers everything anime any kind of fandom at all so we're inside if i can get this camera to move there we go we're inside the landing region which is actually a one of the uh, one of the ecs acs regions that's been repurposed and this video depending on how i plan this out this video is going to be a bit in the long side because we're actually going to be taking a whirlwind tour of all the regions we're going to start off with this region however which is the main one that you're going to be landing at um i think i can't remember where this sl url goes but when i'm going to put the sl url in for this video when it uploads tomorrow i'm going to land you right here which is the path that's in between the two halls so the whole point of the fandom convention is, as the name suggests, it's a convention. We'll start off with the main convention centre in here, so you just follow the arrows and then you head in. And if we head in here, you will see the actual main convention centre hall. It's actually laid out like your classic convention centre hall that you would basically see in real life. So you've got little booths here, all covering different aspects. There's there's a, a, a region designer sponsor. That's what that one is. Uh, that one's still being set up by the looks of things. If we hook round here, what's this here? We have got... Oh, it's uh, Crateur. These guys make pretty damn nice. There we go. Mermaid Tales. There we go. And I think these guys were also responsible for making the Lamertica region for the fandom. More about that when we have a little tour around. But as you can see here, there is numerous booths and numerous vendors going on inside the actual main convention centre hall. So it's laid out like a typical convention centre, which you could have, which you've you might have been to if you've been to Comic Con, that kind of thing, or in my case, the Vapor Expo here in the UK. It's laid out very similar to that. Little bit more room between the booths. Oh, look, bit of Doctor Who go. Ah, it's Vortec. <laughs> How you doing, Christina? If you're watching this, Christina's always on top of these things when it comes to these kinds of uh, little conventions. You always see Vortec showing up. They've been on the go for a very long time, actually, Vortec. They do all sorts of science fiction stuff. Couple of booths here haven't been done yet. I'm actually slightly cheating. I'm recording this late on the afternoon uh, of the 19th because the vloggers, uh, the vloggers are supposed to be releasing their videos on the 20th and this event opens up on the 21st. The problem is there's six regions to cover. So one day is simply not enough to record and edit a video and get it out in time. So I'm kind of cheating with this one a little bit and recording it a day before so I can actually get the thing encoded on the 20th to release on the 20th. This is Myville. Um, yeah, Myville. It's another selection of regions it's a kind of victorian-esque set of regions very nice place actually myville they've got a little spot here i like the garden thing they've got going on that's very nice oh look butterflies yay don't get distracted vic moving on <laughs> We've got some Star Wars going on here, as you can see. Now, let's zoom this in and see if this actually... Because this made me chuckle. If this actually manages to res in. Because I've got the draw distance up pretty high. I think I've got the draw distance up at around about 900. So I can preload things as I'm going in to record them. Things are taking a little bit a little bit longer to pop in. But this sign... Had, there it is. End tiny oppression. <laughs> Would you class Ewoks as tinies? 
They're a bit too tall for tinies. Tinies are about half the size. Is he? Oh, anyway, moving on. Don't get distracted, Vic. Move on. Move on, Vic. So going down, you can basically see that all of the major science fiction genres are essentially well represented here. You do have Star Trek, you've got Star Wars that we've just seen, Doctor Who that we've just seen, and everything in between. Now again, unlike the old sci-fi con and the old sci-fi expo, this is not just about science fiction. You're going to see booths at the convention centre that, that basically have nothing to do with science fiction at all. Nothing to do with science fiction. There's one for the Sci-Fi Alliance. That's the Star Wars one that we've seen anyway. We've, seen, we've already seen. Let's hook around here and go up this side. So we're going to be doing a full tour of what's going on and what you can expect to see when you actually walk into the convention center. That's the region sponsor for New Tokyo. We'll be heading there pretty soon. If we hook round here, what we've got here is, oh, it's Find the Fish. These guys make tattoos. Yeah, they're a tattoo maker, Find the Fish. They make some really nice ones, actually. Over here, we have got, what's this? looks like Wednesday puppets, not puppets, Wednesday, what do you call these things? Animated pet thingy bobs, those those things, right there, right, see, nothing new with science fiction at all. If we hook round here and have a look round, we have got more of these little doll Wednesday things. We have got a wrestling, this, is this wrestling? I think it is, yeah it is, Honor, Pro Wrestling, again. Because it's fandom, it's opened up to everyone. Oh, who's that? That must be one of the people looking after the booth. Wow. Yeah, she's been working out. Anyway, moving on. Don't get distracted, Vic. <laughs> oh, I don't believe it. See these three? <laughs> they, haven't been in my, they haven't been in any of my videos for the past two videos, I think. And look who showed up. It's the triplets. Yeah, these these three these three show up in the most weirdest of places. So it looks like they've got a booth here at the convention center. So again, these these three they're, they're Doctor Who fans as far as I know, but Charlie's Angels they are basically a dance group here in Second Life. Um, if you've been to like Pete Lounge Warehouse, you've probably seen them. This is another wrestling group here called Rise. Have we missed any other booths out? I don't think we have. Oh, there's one. This looks like some kind of oriental, J Japanese, maybe Chinese fashion. Yeah, it is. Japanese, Chinese fashion, that kind of thing. Let's hook the camera around and go around the back now. That's a pop art stand. Yeah, pop art. That booth's still to be set up yet. Yeah, we have got what looks like furniture of some disc. Ooh. Actually, some of this looks not bad. Very artisan looking furniture, that stuff. And it looks like an expansion of more furniture here, along with flying dragons and stuff. Oh. Hooking the camera around, we have got more furniture-esque ideas here on the side, including this, which absolutely freaked me out. Look at this. That is just weird. See, if you looked at that when you were drunk, you'd probably throw up. If we... <laughs> Look at that. That is just weird. Weird. And it's for sale as well. You can actually pop in here and buy it. Um, so that was a quick whirlwind tour of the convention centre. I've probably missed a few places out here, but you, you get the idea. There's all sorts of vendors and shops. What we're going to do now, we're going to head outside, back out to where I am. There's me right there. But we're going to head across the way into the opposite convention centre. Now, this convention centre here is basically doubling up as, on the left-hand side, like an auditorium kind of thing, because they are going to be having events here, <coughs> like music events, uh, group events, that kind of stuff. But you've also, on the right-hand side of the opposite convention centre, you've got some information stalls about other conventions and other events that are going on. So you've got Smokefest here, You've got Pink Eye Can here, and you have got, round the other side here, you've got information about more events, like the Renaissance Fair, which is coming up 
in a month and a half, I think, the Renaissance Fair. You've got this one, which is another another one that's coming soon. What one's this? <clears throat> oh, the Living Expo. It's one of the newer ones that's popping up. Yeah, that's February the 2nd to 2024. They're getting in early with the advertising. That's not until next year. And you've got this one here, which is Christmas around the world. So, yeah, they're getting in there with the Christmas Expo adverts early. On the far side here, you have got this, which is Rep Your Fandom Contest. And people can, and I think all the booths have been claimed already, people can claim a booth and basically do a build and represent their fandom. And the way that this is working, is, at least as far as I know, the booth that has the most donations to the American Cancer Society ends up being crowned the winner. Is there someone representing Doctor Who here? Because if there isn't, I will be very sad. Um, not seen anything for Doctor Who. There's, there's one for um, Back to the Future there. There's got to be one for Doctor Who. Uh, other side, maybe? Let's have a look here. There must be one for Doctor Who here somewhere. Ah, oh, there's Star Trek. That was bound to happen. That one's empty. Ah, oh, there we go. Police box. There's someone representing Doctor Who. What's next door? Oh, Gallifrey. There's two people representing Doctor Who. There we go. Good to see Doctor Who being represented. So this is what you can basically call the landing region. This is the convention region region so you've got the two main convention halls the big one that we just left uh, which is over here that's got all the uh, if we get the camera around there we go the big one that's over here that's got all the little miniature booths inside and then you've got this one over here which is a mirror copy essentially that doubles up as basically the event place where a lot of the events or some of the events are going to be taking place along with the rep here fandom thing that's going on far side of the region which is down here you've got another event area if we hook the camera around You've got a miniature event area going on over here. There's a little stage on one side. If we spin the camera around to the opposite side, which is over here, you also have what looks like a stage that's beginning to be built, which is then hooked on to this side of the convention hall here. And this is for the bigger events. So that way, at least you know when you land here, uh, you'll probably be facing north, which means you want to head to the left. So that way you can go into the main convention centre, which is in here, and have a look at all the booths. Now, if we bring up the world map, which is there, and then do that, we are currently in ACS 2. We've got another six regions to look at. Now, two of them, is it six? No, I think it's seven. But two of these regions that are making up the sci-fi convention are basically event regions. There's four major themed booth regions where the bigger uh, fandom booths are. And we're going to be taking those in turn. But first, what I need to do is reset the camera, stop the recording, and I'll join you at the first themed region. So here we are in the first themed region, this one, this region's called Void in Motion, but it's been taglined as Space. So let's have a look around, oh, where's my camera? There we go, no, no, that's not it Vic, it's that one, there we go, and you get the fly cam running now. For all intents and purposes, when you first walk out of the back of the main convention centre, which joins in to, this, to the Void in Motion region, it looks like some kind of suburban place. Now, the four themed regions that we're going to be looking at all have a distinctive and definitive track or pavement that you basically walk past and all the major booths are basically built along this path. That way you don't basically get lost. I mean, I can remember, I think it was the first and the second sci-fi convention before the ACS one popped up and it, it was confusing because there was paths leading all over the place. People got lost, people got confused. They're not making that same mistake here. So you've got Starfleet Task Force 6 who haven't even started setting up yet. Wow, they better hurry up because build day, I think build day finishes today. If we follow this road going down, here we are. We've got more Starfleet-y stuff going on. What one's this? This is 
uh, United Federation Starfleet, so it's UFS, and if we pop inside, you can see that it's basically set up, oh, there's actually people in here, it's basically set up as a Starfleet place. Star Trek place, as you would expect. Good layout, this. Got to admit, very nice layout. If we head back out the door again, st straight across from UFS, you have got uh, nothing going on here. This one's beginning to be built up by the looks of it. What one's this? Is this Star Trek again? And Oh, it's Inspire Space Park. I thought these guys closed down. I had no idea Inspire Space Park was still going. Inspire Space Park, they've been on the go for a long time now. I thought they closed down as well. So you've got a kind of wormhole Stargate thing going on here. I don't think these guys have fin quite finished setting up yet either. Pull the camera back out and we'll head back down this road again. Following this same path. Round the corner and then you hit this. Now I know that the triplets took a picture of this earlier on. It's some kind of destroyed older civilization, big Stargate ring explodey thing. Did that make any sense? Because it made sense in my head and then I said it and now it just makes no sense whatsoever. Can you tell this is completely unscripted? I think you can. But yeah, this is the middle of the region and essentially the whole purpose or the whole layout of this region, if we pull the camera up, we can get a better idea of what's actually going on. In the centre of the region, you have got the ruins of an alien civilization, which is down there, right? But around the edges is where the booths have been laid out. It's a very, very interesting layout they've got going on with this. Um, the way that this has been done for the fandom uh, the fandom convention is that a team of builders has built each specific themed region and the region has been parceled out to have booths inside either 32 by 32 or 40 by 40 or a sponsor booth in the middle and the way that it's been laid out the booths are inside pre-existing buildings that fit the theme of the actual constructed region so from the outside this looks like a role-play science fiction colony, but as you walk about, you start to realise, well, not really, because there's shops here. There's a lot of shops here in the booth, so let's head back down again. We will follow this road, which is the road that you're going to be walking, down past, past the... Wow, that is a lot of neon. <laughs> down past the, the large neon trees, you've got another little science fiction area here. There we go, another little science fiction area here, again with a lot of vendors out, because these are shops, you will be able to, well, not all of them are shops, some of them are shops, you will be able to actually buy some of these items, and again, you'll find some of these items are one-offs that are being sold for, uh, for the American Cancer Society. If we follow this road round and keep following the road round, we've got another booth here, which looks like it hasn't quite finished setting up yet. There's another one here. This one's finished by the look. Oh, this looks good. Oh, I like this. Very nice. Who's this? Deep Space Destination. Citadel the Legion Chronicles. Never heard of you. Mind you, I'm not really into sci-fi that much in Second Life these days, but this does look good. I like this. Nice layout. Deep Space RP Hub, so they're a roleplay destination. And, of course, you have got your avatars here. You've got your really for life vendors along the edges. If we head back out here and just keep following this road round, we're going past Babel or Babel. Babel or Babel? I don't know. It's one of those two. Very kind of Star Wars cantina thing going on in here. Head back out the door, head back round and just follow that road round. So you're basically getting a virtual tour here, people. That's what you're getting. Because this is what I'm going to be doing with all of the regions. We're going to be following the path round. Sailor V. Now, these guys have been on the go for a very, very long time. I think these guys even popped up at the very first science fiction convention, the convention that Kirk and the gang run. So this is a very old company and they basically do, you guessed it, folks, Science fiction stuff. You've got Star Trek bridges, Star Trek bridges, more Star Trek bridges, Star Trek rooms. They like the Star Trek here. If we hook round to the other side, 
You've got even more vendors over here. Yeah, more Star Trek stuff. And then you've got your uniforms and your items there. It's all wearables. You've got your individual items here. And you've got even more vendors here. If we head up the stairs. Ah. Anything? No. So the Sailor V must not quite have finished yet. But yeah, Sailor V, if you're into your science fiction, you'll recognise the name immediately. Because Sailor V's been on the go for a very, very long time. Still following the path round. Leaving the crashed, whatever the hell that is. That glowy doomy thing down there we're going back up the hill to the opposite side of the colony we've got a little triangular looking pyramid building here who's this face desk <laughs> yeah i feel like doing that every morning when i wake up what are they selling in here it looks like a variety of science fiction stuff yeah it's a variety of science fiction science fiction based avatars and just basically science fiction based stuff Ah, furniture as well, by the looks of it. Yeah. Ooh, this looks actually quite nice. Wicker chair, wicker chair kind of thing. So there you go. Face it. Oh, look at that. It's like a Nautilus thing from 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea. Very steampunk. Very steampunk. I like the look of that. More furniture here. So let's head back out. That was face desk continuing up the hill. Who have we got on this side? Herbert Creations. He's another one that's been on the go for a very long time. So Herbert Creations is here as well. He's selling his uniforms and clothing. And we're going to head back up here. Uh, this will be Star Trek again. There's a lot of Star Trek in the mind you. It is the space region. There was bound to be a lot of Star Trek here. Who's this? It's a tree. Okay. Anything upstairs? It's pictures. This must be just a display place. Who's this? Dan Tween. Oh, right. It's a Star Wars place. It doesn't look very Star Wars on the inside. Huh. Anyway, moving back out. Back along the road. More Star Trek stuff. More Star Trek stuff here. Who's this? Uh, Starbase London. I've never heard of these guys. They must be new. Yeah, Starbase London. Back out again, back up the hill. Who's this? We have got, if it ever reses in, Dragon Swarm. Well, obviously not Star Trek with a name like that. It must be some other kind of role play that's going on with us, or it's just a vendor. By the looks of it, it's just a vendor that's going on in here. Okay, heading back out again. We go up the hill onto the flat land. Another area here with another area here that's not been fit, it's not been started yet. And that's us, folks. That was uh, that was the tour of the Void region, which is the region to do with space. Now, again, I'm going to emphasize this. There was a couple of empty booths here. I am recording this a day early. It's a day before build uh, build week basically ends. This opens to the public on the 21st. I'm recording this on the 19th, a day before build ends. So you might actually see a couple of empty booths dotted in each of the themed regions as we walk around. Anyway, that was the space region. Moving on to New Tokyo next. So we're here at the Akira region, which is the region directly next door to the Void region, and the region that we're in is themed around New Tokyo. So once again, like the region that's behind us that we just left, this region that we're in right now is on a theme. If we pull the cam up all the way up and tilt it down, you can kind of see where the whole New Tokyo thing is coming from, because it does kind of look like a, like you know if there was some kind of colony in the future and they were called they called themselves new tokyo it would probably look something like this now again like the area that we just left this has got a definitive track or pavement that you walk around so you basically don't get lost so here's me on the border of the space region that we just left there's the space region behind us, and let's follow the road round and see what we can see shall we so again there's going to be big booths along the side and in the middle if we start up this way here uh, this one has not been set up yet keep going 
That one's not been set up yet. In fact, there's not even a sign on those two, so they must have not rented out. Up oh, here we go. We have got... I am going to butcher this name. G Gia Gun? G Gia Gun? It's a Gundam thing, right? But I don't know how you pronounce that. Gia Gun? I probably butchered that name, but yeah, these guys were actually setting up this morning when I was walking around The Sims to preload everything before I, before I hit record. So it's a Gundam-based thing that's going on here. And they've got all sorts of displays and information displays out for you to have a look at. Again, because it's not directly tied to science fiction anymore, the old sci-fi convention and sci-fi expo is basically open to all sorts of fandoms. This is why these guys... Are, this is why these guys have decided to pop in. So if you're a Gundam fan... There's a lot of stuff to look around in here. There's a lot of info as well in the info boards that aren't quite resing. Because again, I've got my draw distance cranked all the way up to 900. Heading back out and back over here, just following the road. And we're going to hook up to the upper level here. Nothing in there. If we hook in here and go in here, what's this? Oh, it's a Tokusatu dedicated place. Tokusatu. Um, for other people that don't know, it's it's a genre of like hero kind of series and hero films over in Japan, like you know Kikeda, uh, Metal Rider, that kind of stuff. You can see the pictures here, and yeah, that does include the Power Rangers as well. So there's a little info booth here, uh, set up by a set up by a Toku fan. There we go, heading back out again across this, and we've got, what's this? Oh, it's an anime thing. What's going on here? Must be Vocaloid Photo Booth, take a snapshot. All oh, right, it's like a snapshot place. You can take a snapshot with this anime character up here. Okay, heading back out again. Back round here. And then we'll go back down the stairs. And then we'll follow this path again. All the way around here. This is a very interesting layout. See, you've got these little booths here that look like little market stalls, but they're not actually market stalls. They're just there to fill out space. Just going around this again, you've got another booth right up here, which is Red Rocket. Let's head in here, see what's going on. I remember these guys. I've seen these guys before. Right, yeah, I've seen these guys before. It's a vendor. They sell all sorts of weird and wonderful stuff. There we go. And there's more stuff there. Slime drencher. Going round again. And you've got more stuff going on here. I remember. I think these guys were at the last sci-fi expo from what I remember. So hooking round here, you've got another Star Trek. There's a lot. Okay, there's going to be a lot of Star Trek places, folks. I'm just saying it now. There's going to be a lot of Star Trek places. This is the USS Gallant and its Solaris Station. I think I remember these guys from the last Sci-Fi Expo. So yeah, you've got Solaris Station here as well. Very, very nice layout on this. Very nice layout. You usually see that with a lot of these Star Trek roleplay places. They've, they've got the eye for what a Star Trek base should actually look like. A lot of them do look good. This one has been been rented out there's a logo on it but they haven't moved in yet they're, again they're cutting it very close because tomorrow's the last build day over here we've got the region sponsor which is star mesh body it's a new mesh body that's just been released you'll find star mesh body right in the middle of the new tokyo region heading back out again and we're just going to follow this path around here we go this one here's empty, and it's got the Fandom Con logo in it, which means that booth's not rented out either. i surprised. Oh, seriously? I just spotted that logo. These, they're everywhere. But I'm surprised the new Tokyo is as empty as this. I thought this place would have filled out. Uh, we've seen them in the convention centre. They must have more money to waste than I have. Uh, yeah, Charlie's Angels again. <laughs> like, why didn't they just rent a whole sim and call it quits? But yeah, it's the triplets that we left. Oh, 
<laughs> that we left over at the convention centre. It looks like they've rented out one of the booths in the new Tokyo region, although they've carried on that Mondrian. The, the Mondrian thing, by the way, is the uh, pattern 60s work. It was a designer, uh, a designer from 1966 onwards that came up with this patterned uh, block work back in the mid to late 60s, which ended up in a lot of 60s dresses. Mondrian pattern. That's what it's called, the Mondrian pattern. So yeah, you get Charlie's Angels here. If we head back out again and round this corner, you have got... Who's this? You have got... Min... I hate this kind of font. Min... You've got them that I can't pronounce because the font's a mess. Here's a tip for you people, right, I'm going to get a little bit preachy here. If you're trying to spread out the word of your brand new or not so new vendor, use a font that people can actually read. Thank you. Moving on. <laughs> Although I will say, they're actually selling some pretty good stuff here. So you've got clothing vendors at the back. I like that. That is very science fiction. Space girl outfit. Uh, you've got more science fiction outfits here. And if we hook round, you've got, yeah, it's a clothing vendor by the looks of things. M min dragon? M min, min, something or other? It's that font. It's that font. It's too damn confusing. That font right there. Min, min de gardens. Mind garden? Is it mind garden? Yeah, it's mind gardens. <laughs> There's going to be people watching this video that probably managed to read this font almost immediately and were screaming, MIND GARDENS, YOU FOOL! For the people that don't know, I'm actually partially blind in real life. I've got an excuse. So, it's like... <laughs> Hooking round the Star Mesh Body, back end of the Star Mesh Body sponsor uh, area, you've got this little area here, which is like a little chill-out area. And then we end up at the sim boundary to the next region. So I'm going to cut the recording here and we're going to move on to the next themed region. On to the next region. This is the Aldermore region, which is joined on to the region that we just left. You just go through that dark tunnel at the back and you're back in, you're back in uh, New Tokyo. This one, however, has been named and tagged Noir. New Orleans, so New Orleans is all bright and, you know, all bright and happy and stuff. Think of New Orleans if it was set in, if it was set in the era of Casablanca, the old Humphrey Bogart movie, that kind of thing. Let's spin this camera around and see what's going on here, shall we? Now, so what we've got here is a completely different layout and a completely different look. It's like massive difference between the new Tokyo layout and the look of new Tokyo and then this place. So the first one we've got here is what looks like, it looks like a kind of miniature stage. What's this? Lady Oscar and the Roses of Versailles. Ah, there must be some kind of stage thing going on here, like a stage play or something. Because it's basically laid out as one. Chairs out, there's a stage at the front there. Hmm, interesting. Following the track round, again, there's a track that you follow round. You've got a little park space here to basically chill out. What's this at the far end? You have got... Ah! It looks like coffee and cakes. Can't go wrong with coffee and cakes. Okay, let's spin the camera around. Opposite that, you've got a dark and foreboding, very big building here. It looks like this one's still being set up by the looks of things. What's this one for? pull the camera or is it just part of it um this one your logo here it's not been set up yet you have got on this side lantian flocks through the doors what are they selling in here oh they're selling food can't go wrong with that these actually look quite nice look at that very nice you can get hand animations as well it makes it makes it like it makes it look as if you're eating so that's what lantian fox is all about and they're also selling wearables as well. Parasols, dresses, so that's Lantian Fox. Pull the camera back out again, and it looks as if they've got a sale going on, 15% off as well. Following the road up, and around the corner, you've got another little park area sitting right there. Round the corner again. Anything going on up here? Yes, there is. Through the doors. 
Oh, it's been set up as a jazz club. Look at that. Even with a static band on one side as well. That is very cool. Very cool. Back out the doors. And swing back round again. Try not to get lost. There we go. So again, following the path that you're going to be taking as you're walking this area. There's still some floating lampposts here. This bit in the middle, this big blue bit, I think this is going to be the region sponsor area. Again, they're cutting it pretty damn close because final build day's tomorrow, so they're cutting it very close. Going round the road, once again, you've got another booth in here. Looks like a little shop that's being set up, a little coffee shop. Back out. And back down the road. You will end up, if you're hearing a noise in the background, the neighbours decided to head out and start cutting his grass for some strange apparent reason. Little uh, kind of mausoleum. Oh, that is creepy. Yeah. Graveyard thing going on. That is very creepy. Graveyard thing going on here. Some of this stuff actually looks pretty damn nice. Really, really nice build work going into here, which takes you back out into the road in the opposite end. This is a, this is basically a shortcut to get from one end of the region to another. So let's wind our way back out and head on to the main road as if you're walking the place again. You have got another clothing. No, in fact, it's not. It's FCW. So there's there's wrestling in Second Life. Yeah, I know. I know. It's I, I, I don't know how they do it either. It's probably some kind of button mashing thing that goes on to overpower your opponent or something like that. But this is to do with furry wrestling. So you've got you've got the two wrestling um, you've got the two wrestling groups that we bumped into when we were having a cam around inside the main convention area. This one is to do with furry wrestling. You can tell by the pictures here, they're all furries that are going on here. Uh, FCW, I think I, I think I spotted FCW at the Relay for Life when I was running the track. So yeah, they're here in the... In the um, in the Noir, Noir New Orleans, this one's another your logo here. They haven't set up yet that one either. Going round again. And we end up going round this corner. Still a few people setting up here. Oh, there's one. The Salty Sailor Tattoos. It looks like a tattoo place being set up here. Yep, it looks like a tattoo place that's being set up here by the looks of things. And there's a prim with a sofa sitting on it, so they must still be setting that what that place up. Going round the corner, another year logo here, there's a lot of people that are cutting this to the very, very last minute. Very last minute for setting up their booths. Your logo here, your logo here, so there's more places that I haven't set up yet. Going up here, we end up in a cul-de-sac. Okay, back out again and back round. You've got a little... Ah, oh, it's one of these. Who's this? DJ Crixus presents Sir Arthur Conan Doyle's The Lost World. Oh, what's in here? Ooh. Okay, this is trippy. <laughs> this is very trippy. I'm not going to spoil too much of it. Let's just pull the camera back out again. That is very trippy. Back down the hill and we're getting to the end of this region by the looks of things. Yep, we are. We're here at the tunnel. Now, there's a lot of Lego on the other side. I'm going to be skipping that region. We're going to be having... We're going to be looking at that region and the other event region separately at the end of this video. At the end of this video. So, we're going to hop, skip the Lego region and go on to the next themed region. And we're here on the third of the four themed regions. This is Fracti Tempest, which is headlined as Lost in Time. So if we head into the camera and pull the camera up, you'll see where the name's coming from here. It's basically a region that's been themed out as, well, a ruinous, ruinous old Lost in Time kind of, you know... You can see what they're going for here. You can definitely see what they're going for. It's a kind of ruined, 
What's the word I'm looking for? There's a word I'm looking for that I can't think of right now. Anyway, let's, let's head back down to where we were at the beginning here and go along the path as if you were walking the place yourself when you actually get here so you can see what's actually here. Hook round, that's the uh, exit of the uh, right there. That's the exit from the Legoland place next door. So following round, you have got a ruined, uh, a ruined place here. You've got more ruins going on here. On this side here, what have we got? We've got Beyond Star. Don't know what this is. It looks like a vendor. Yeah, I think it's a vendor. They haven't set the actual vendors up yet, though. We're just looking at blank vendor screens here, but they're definitely selling stuff. Definitely selling stuff. They must be setting up later on today by the looks of things. Let's back out of there and keep going on down the path. So we follow the path round up the stairs, and we end up here, which is, looks like a... A tear in time, yeah. This is actually laid out pretty. This is actually laid out pretty good. Pretty good layout. Got that kind of ruined civil civilization. That was the word I'm looking for. Ruined civilization theme going on. Those look suspiciously like hexagon. Is that, is that a hexagon or pentagon? Those look suspiciously like new series roundels from a. Doctor Who console room. Anyway, what do we have here? Don't know what this is. This looks suspiciously Stargate. Hmm, interesting. Don't know if there's a vendor setting up there. It looks as if there's a vendor about to set up. Right, so let's head up these stairs. You've got more ruinous stuff here and you've got a little drop down going on in here and to... Oh look! Cthulhu's trying to wake up. Yeah, that's not creepy. Anyway, moving on. Under the arch, <clears throat> you have got more vendors here. This is Old World Fantasy. Kitty Creations, and it looks like these guys have actually uh, have actually finished setting up. Yeah, lots of, um, lots of old school clothing going on here. Definitely old school. Kind of late medieval-esque. That's what they're going for, late medieval, going into Edwardian, that kind of stuff. There's gents' clothing over here at the back as well. So if you if you've got a male avatar, you'll be able to clothe them with the older older world kind of medieval Edwardian stuff going on here. So that is a Kitty Creations going on there. Let's head back up these stairs. Now, if I remember rightly. It's here somewhere. There's a hidden thing here. When I was coming round, is it outside? Ah, here it is. <laughs> Little hidden gem at the back end of the region. So you've got, you've got, well, it's basically a kraken. It's essentially, that's what it is. It's a kraken that's pulling down an old shipwreck by the looks of it. That is very cool, though. That is very cool. Right, back up onto the beaten path. Where are we here? We've got the Kitty Creations here, so we're going to spin round and go back onto the beaten path again, which is here. Follow this round. What have we got here? I think somebody's still setting up here by the looks of it, but the sign is still up, so we go over the bridge. Over to this area here, and this has got a stage on it. I wouldn't be surprised... Because there's a stage here, I wouldn't be surprised if there's going to be some kind of events or something that's going to be taking place on this little area you've got up here. So if we head down here, down to the bottom end here, you have got more areas. And this, this looks like some kind of medieval thing going on here. Definitely something medieval going on here. What's the sign say? Uh, it just says role play. Any idea about who the role play group is? Or has it just been jumped? There's a sign there. We're waiting that loading in. It must be some kind of role play group that's actually got their hands in this much bigger plot here in the on the side. Casterly Rock. Well, there we go. That answers that. It's Game of Thrones. That's what that is. Over here, you have got more statues and stuff going on. You've got the side of the Castle Rock roleplay area going on here. Around here, there's another empty booth. Oh, wait a minute, I think this one might have been rented, they just haven't set up yet. 
What do we have here? The Reckless Angel. So I don't know who that's going to be. They must still be setting up, obviously. And we're around here. There, we're back at the beginning, almost. And in here... We have a room that looks like it's been filled with water. That's odd. That's very odd. What's going on in here? It's a room that's filled with water. Okay. Strange. Anyway, let's head back out. And we'll head into the last booth, which is over here. Which is a big rocket. Which is definitely out of place in the Lost in, lost in Time area. Well, it's a rocket turned into an observatory. Yeah, it's been turned into a living space by the looks of things. This is very cool. Very cool. What do we have here? Looks like notes and stuff that's going on. Stuff is taking a long time to res because I've got the draw distance up. Up, oh, hold on. What's this? Try the solstice experience. I think we missed this one in the first... We missed this one in the first go around. I must have taken a wrong turn in the middle part. What do we have here? Right, USS Solstice. That's what they're talking about. Try the Solstice experience. What's inside here? Let's have a sneak peek. Nothing much. Some kind of orb going on in going on in here on the side. So that is, yeah, this is the USS Solstice. This this whole area in the middle. I think they might actually be the region sponsor. So this is the Lost in Time area. The pathing for this is a little bit confusing because there's several breaks in the path as you come out from the sim next door because of the way that this place has been laid out. But as you can see, it's a definite it's it's a definite kind of ruined civilization feel that's going on with this particular area. So the next place next door uh, is another themed region and it's a very, very interesting themed region because as you can see, the region next door, I mean that's that there is the event place that we're going to be having a look at later on, but the region that's tacked next door is mostly underwater. And that's because it is literally an underwater region, and it's the last of the themed regions that we're going to be having a look at next. So I should really be using some kind of diving suit or something like this, but I, I don't have one, so I'm, I'm just underwater here. This is La Mertica, which is the underwater build and underwater city. If we pull the cam out and just go straight up, that area there that we're looking at, that one there, which is actually tacked on uh, to the Lost uh, lost in Time City, that one there is actually one of the event regions that we're going to be having a look at at the end of the video. The other water region that's tacked on to that is the final region, and this one is based, well, it's based off an underwater city. This has got to be probably my favourite build out of all three of them, because as you can see, the whole build is underwater. If we just pull the cam up, nothing much but rocks poking out in the top, and underneath it looks like a lost a lost city of Atlantis or something. This is an absolutely gorgeous, gorgeous build that they've got going on down here. Just floating the cam around up above the build itself, you can see that the way that this has been laid out, again, it looks like a well-worn in or maybe lost civilization city, the way that they've got this thing laid out, very, very nice layout here, but what we're going to do, we're going to do the same as we've done with all the other themed regions that we've looked at so far, we are going to head back to me, and we're going to walk the path as if you're walking it with me, so, following the path down, on to the main path, you have got a booth here. It's got the Fandom Con logo on it, which means this one, this booth hasn't actually rented out yet. And then following on, past more booths, under the main gateway arch. Oh, what have we got here? We have got Safe Waters Foundation. From what I remember, Safe Waters Foundation, is that, is, is that a mayor? I think it's a merfolk group, like mermaids and mermen from what I remember. It's been a while since I've heard the name Safe Waters Foundation, but I think it is. I think it's a group that um, basically teams up with 
mermaid groups and merfolk groups. Safe waters is basically all about waters that are large enough and basically deep enough so merfolks, and for that matter divers as well, can actually jump in and have fun. You know, like Blake Sea, the deeper waters around New Babbage, that kind of thing. So you've got Safe Waters Foundation here. If we head back out and then hook right, you have got another booth directly across. Who's this? Sea Haven Underwater Colony. Oh, there's a shark in here. Ooh, and there's a Stargate. Well, it kind of makes sense, I suppose. So you've got these guys here, Sea Haven Underwater Colony. It looks as if these guys are in the middle of setting up their booth as well, because there's still not much here. No landmark givers or anything like that. So heading back out, again going back down the path, you have got. Who's this? Oh! It's Hollow Cluck Henley, who does a lot of DJ work uh, over for um, Rosehaven Estates. So I didn't even know he had a shop here. So you've got Hollow Cluck's shop. In fact, there he is. They're actually setting up. I wondered who that was. So you've got Hollow Cluck Henley here, busy setting up his shop, Doctor Strange stuff. From what I remember, because it's been a while since I've looked at Hollow's shop, he basically does... He basically does a lot of... a lot of... Um, a lot of general clothing. Like, you know, you've got Doctor Strange's stuff here, but if you look round here, you've also got, and uh, that's the pool party adverts, if you look round here, you've got like general floaties and stuff, wristbands and all that kind of stuff. The main shop, I haven't been to his main shop for a long time, but his main shop's got a very eclectic, that's the word I'm looking for, a very eclectic mix of stuff that he's got up for sale, but um, yeah, um, what's he got? what's he got up for grabs, I think? We've caught him as he's setting the place up, so we're probably not going to be seeing the main vendors as I'm actually recording this, by the looks of it. But what we've got here is Doctor Strange, and that looks like an avatar as well. Um, Hollow Clark Henley's Cartoon World and Beyond, music, art exhibits, and more. He does a lot of DJ work. I think he's probably going to he's probably going to be doing um, a couple of DJ spots for the events that are going on for the Fandom Con as well. More about the events at the end of this video. So we're heading out of Hollow Cluck Henley's shop, back on the beaten path again. That one's still got the Fandom Con logo, which means that one's not rented out. We've got stairs going up at the very end, though. We have got what's look, what looks like a temple dedicated to... In fact, that's not Poseidon. He's got a tail on him. Did Poseidon have a tail on him? I can't remember now. It looks like Poseidon, though. That is very cool, though. Very cool. So let's head up the stairs. Here we go. What do we have here? Underwater celebration with an arrow pointing this way. Looks like it's not been set up yet. Or it could be dedicated, or it's going to be a dedicated space for underwater events that may be going on later on here. This is the main path heading down. If we head over here, though... We have got, yeah, it's going to be a dedicated space for bands and stuff. There's a, there's a drum kit there. What looks like a stage is going to be set up here probably sometime later on today for underwater events. Over here, we have got another booth. And this one's not set up yet. In fact, I think they're in the middle of setting up because there's a platform just floating up there for no reason. What's this one going to be? It just simply says DC. There's a lot of people that are cutting this very, very close, very close, because the event opens up on the 21st, and we're at the 19th, right, well, we're kind of almost at the end of the 19th, because I'm recording this at 7 o'clock in the evening, at least this section at 7 o'clock in the evening, there's a lot of people that are cutting this very, very close with the setup, very close with the setup, so you get more empty booths here, oh, in fact, this one's rented, actually, who's this rented to? Unity Maxim, roleplay establishment. Yeah, they're still setting up by the looks of things. Again, they've literally got less than 24 hours left because here's the thing. The bloggers, I think the bloggers are being let loose on the regions today. Like the written bloggers, and they're going to be seeing the same thing I'm seeing. A lot of these booths are not set up yet. They're leaving it too late to set up. The vloggers, which is me and other people like me that's filming, a lot of us are probably going to be filming today and editing the video tomorrow for upload tomorrow, which is also the 20th. There's going to be a lot of booths and a lot of roleplay groups which have got, which are basically, who are basically going to miss their opportunity for essentially free advertising because booths like this one, the sign's out. 
the sign's out here, but the booth's empty. That they are cutting it very, very close. Very close to the end of build setup. So let's head back round here. Oh, what's this? Uh, who's this? Any signs? There's one. Nadia, the secret of the blue water steampunk before steampunk. What? Nadia, the secret of the blue water steampunk before... Uh, I don't know. I think there should be a full stop after the blue water. Steampunk before steampunk. Gundam. Oh, it's an O. We've seen him before. That is Ruben Mayo Gundam Park. He has got another booth over at New Tokyo that we looked at. So this must be an offshoot of his New Tokyo booth that we looked at. Very nice scaffolding, by the way. Very nice scaffolding. Looking at this from a builder's perspective, that is very cool scaffolding going on. Nice platform work. Very nice platform work. Anyway, moving on, don't get distracted, Vic. Going down the beaten path again and following the beaten path round. Who have we got here? We have got... Elsewhere like nowhere else. Doesn't actually say the name of who it actually is. And again, it's another empty booth. Wow, it's like... There is going to be a lot of blogs being released today and a lot of vlogs being released tomorrow that are going to be looking at empty booths because a lot of these people that got their booths are waiting to literally the last minute to build their booth up. And it's a shame, really, because they're basically missing out and a lot of free advertising. The bloggers, the vloggers like myself that are calming round and taking pictures or calming round like me and taking videos. All we are seeing is empty booths because a lot of these people are t a lot of these people are just leaving it way too late to actually set up the booth. So if we go over this bridge, we've got more of the forgotten underwater city going on here. Oh, let's head under this. Travel the beaten path. Head round the corner here. This is a very cool build, though. This is a very, very cool build. You've got a shipwreck going on here. There's the shipwreck. And we've got another booth here. Is it empty or is there actually people in it? Nope, it's empty. And by the looks of it, it is rented out. It's rented out to Mau Mauli. Mauli? Mauli. Surfable waves. Well, there's nothing, there's nothing to see here. Another empty booth, but it's definitely rented because the sign's already out. Going round again, we have got Grotto of Wonders. What's in here? Oh, look at this. It looks like a treasure trove. Yep, it's like a little treasure trove thing going on in here. Going up the ramp, there's more treasure. This is a phenomenal build. Phenomenal build that they've did here. Look at this. And it keeps going as well, all the way up the steps. Up to what looks like a sunken platform. Yep, and we end up at the end of the path. And this is the back end of the secondary convention centre. And guess what, folks? We have just looked at all four of the main themed regions. Now, I mentioned the events. We're going to cut this part here and we're going to have a very quick look at the two major event regions. So as I said before, there are two regions of uh, of the ring that's, uh, that's joined on to the main conference region. There's two regions that have been set aside purposefully for events. That way, none of the event lag will impact any of the booth regions, the themed booth regions that we've had a look at. This is the first of the major themed regions, and whoever made this is a fan of Lego. You, you can kind of tell. Yeah, you can kind of, because it's a whole entire region where the ground texture's been sent, but been put into Lego blocks. There's big Lego blocks that are strewn around the side here. If we head up, over to here, you have got this little place here, which is called Nova. And it looks like a little seating area. Yeah, it's a little seating area around here with alien dudes. Look at him. 
little alien dude just sitting there chilling out, relaxing. So this is one of the event areas. There's going to be parties and all sorts of stuff going on here. If we hook round to the opposite side, you have got a rubber ducky overturned bathtub stage going on here, away from the Lego land with floaties and stuff. If you don't want to, be, if you don't want to be standing on the miniature stage, you can pop yourself on a floaty and listen to the DJs and stuff that are going to be playing here. Or on the opposite side of this, you do of course have this massive expanse of basically a miniature Lego land where a lot of the other events are going to be taking place as well. Now, if we pull the cam up, and this is one of the reasons that I've got the draw distance up so high, you have got another event, re event region, which is basically two regions over. So we've got the Lost in Time region here, which we had a look at, that's one of the themed booth regions, but then we've got the second event region, which is here, and it's the one with the big Kraken sitting on a throne. So if we head over here, we have got some miniature islands just dotted around the place here. And then to the far side, you have got a rather large stage with a rather big, creepy Cthulhu, almost Cthulhu-looking Kraken dude just sitting there poking his head and his tentacles through what's left of that wall. This is obviously set up as a stage here for DJs and stuff to set up and for people to dance on. So this is one of the, one of the two major event areas that are going to be going on for the actual event for fandom. There is, uh, there is on the fandom website a link which will be linking to the Google Calendar for all the events that are going on. I'll be linking to the SL Fandom website uh, in the description of this video. So if you want to figure out what events are on and what time they're on at, plus what event area they're in, you can check the Google Calendar and have a look at the calendar to figure out where you want to go. But that is basically it, folks. We have had a look through all... And this is, again, why I put the camera distance so high up. You can basically see all of the regions here, all of them, starting off with the main convention region over here, which we're, which is where we started the video off at. So this is the main two convention, and this is the main two convention uh, halls here. And if you click on the SL URL in the description on July the twenty first, the SL URL will dump you here in between the two main convention halls. If we go past the convention hall, going in through the going out through the back of the secondary convention hall, we end up in the space colony area, which is the first of the event the uh, event themed areas that we looked at. This is of course space. It's the colony with this weird I don't know what that is buried down there, but it looks like a giant Stargate crash landed on the planet. Into New Tokyo, where the angels, the triplets, have their main booth as well. So this is the New Tokyo region, which again we've had a look at as well. Um, quite a, one or two empty booths here in the New Tokyo region, but I think out of all the regions, the New Tokyo one is one of the more complete ones from what I remember. So going past New Tokyo and flying over it, we go into the Noir New Orleans, and out of all of them, this one here is the most emptiest one, because I think practically three quarters of the people that have rented or booked a booth here are leaving it to the very, very last minute to set up. That big blue prim in the middle is where the sponsor should be, and there's no sign of them yet. No sign of them yet, and you know... The last build day is tomorrow. They're leaving it literally to the last minute. You've got Legoland here. Essentially what it is, it's Legoland, which is the first of the event regions, <clears throat> which we're now flying over now. Once again, in the description, I'm going to be linking to the SL Fandom website, which then links to the Google Calendar, so you can figure out what events are where and who the actual DJs are. If we go past the first of the event regions were now here at the lost in time region which is this old civilization kind of build here that's going on with you well you've got to be careful when walking this one because the path does tend to break up around the back and you can get a little bit confused if you're if you're not paying attention as to where you're walking but this is the lost in time region Past the Lost in Time region, we go into the second of the two major event 
area places with a stage. In fact, two stages. There's one there that I actually flew past. Oh, in fact, hold on. This is this looks like it's been this looks like it's been set up for one of the wrestling folks. Yep, it has. There's a wrestling stage right in the middle. So this has been set up for one of the wrestling folks. So then, no doubt they're going to be having some kind of wrestling event going on here. But you've got the other main stage here. Uh, where the Kraken is poking his head through the wall. And if we go past this, past the event stage, and then plunge underwater, we have got basically the crown jewel of all of these themed regions, which is the underwater region. This is an absolutely gorgeous build here. I mean, look at this. Absolutely stunning build work for the underwater region. Stunning build work for the underwater region. Not just above, but down below as well. So obviously, because these uh, because these pathway roofs are very, very high up, they're obviously expecting people to switch to a mermaid or mer person, mer man outfit when they're actually going round here because these ceilings are very, very high up. So if you are going to be spending a bit of time in the underwater region, get yourself one of the little mer one of the little merfolk costumes. You know, immerse yourself in what is essentially a damn good build. I mean I've seen I've seen multitudes of underwater builds in my what 14, 15 plus years in Second Life. This has got to be one of the best ones I've looked at one of the best ones I've looked at when it comes to underwater construction because constructing things for underwater is very tricky. It's extremely tricky. You can either go down the road of making it far, far too much, far, far too much leaning towards fantasy where it starts to become not believable, but there's that thin line in the middle between fantasy and a workable underwater city. And this one's right on the line. It's, it's a feasible, workable underwater city that they've actually constructed here. Kudos to the builder. Kudos to the builder because this is an absolutely phenomenal under, underwater, underwater build. And that is basically it, folks. That is a look around all of the regions which makes up the SL fandom convention which opens up to the public on the 21st of July. Once again folks, I did record this one day early. Um, when I say one day early, on the, on the brief um, for bloggers and vloggers, the bloggers were allowed in today on the 19th. The vloggers were technically not allowed in until the 20th, which I think is kind of odd because it actually takes far longer to record, edit, encode, and upload a long-form video like this than it does to type out a blog. So I, I don't know why they did that. That they're putting they're putting the vloggers under undue pressure by leaving it to the last day before they're technically allowed to be let in. But I was allowed in early, and I think a lot of the other vloggers were allowed in early. And it wouldn't surprise me if a lot of the other vloggers are going to be recording their recording their videos today, which is the nineteenth, to be released on the twentieth. So you're going to be seeing. Well, they're going to be seeing the same thing that I'm seeing. There's a lot of booths that are leaving it to the very last minute, literally the last day before they actually set up. And for any of for any of the booth owners that are watching this video and they're looking at their empty booth, I'm I'm sorry. Um, I'm sorry. I mean, it's it's like you, you've basically you've basically missed out on a lot of free advertising in video format. And I know that when I was setting up or setting up um, the shots and what line I was going to be taking, there was a lot of bloggers running around because today's blogger day, so there's going to be a lot of bloggers running around taking pictures for their blogs that are going to be released later on tonight. They're going to be taking pictures of empty booths. There's there's a lot of vendors here that are missing out on a lot of free advertising. Anyway, um, keep an eye out uh, on YouTube and on the usual blog 
places for more up-to-date pictures and hopefully one or two up-to-date like recorded tomorrow videos of hopefully booths that have been laid out and finished. That is it for me folks, I hope to see you here at the SL Fandom Convention all the way from the 21st to the 31st of this month. That is it for me folks, as always, thanks for watching and have a good one.